Do you have advice for recent high school grads? I think it's very, it's hard to overstate the importance when you're at a point of transition like that. So you've, you've, you're done being someone that you were, a school kid. You're done with that. And so that's an achievement, but it's also the end of something. It's the end of an identity, and it's a new beginning. So now you have a new beginning. You have a new beginning. You don't get that many of those in your life. Mm -hmm. If you move, if you switch jobs, if you make a radical life transformation, you may have that. Sometimes that's accidental. It's thrust upon you. And that's, that's different. That's harder. Sometimes it's because of opportunity. But maybe you get four or five opportunities like that in your life. So they're rare. You get to be someone new. Who? Who? Have a vision. So when I started to puzzle this out, it was often because of talking to clients or students who didn't know what to do. What should I do with my life? I don't know what to do with my life. Fair enough. And that's not yeah. a very good question. I, what do I do with my life? It's like, what's the answer to everything? It's not a good question, right? It's too vague. So I suppose I answered this to some degree, at least initially, like a conservative person. I said, well, what other people do? Well, they have an intimate relationship. They have a family. So that could be your birth family. So you could fix that up. Or it could be, you know, your new family, your kids your wife, they have friends, they have a social community that might involve civic responsibility, which is something we're direly lacking at the moment. You need a job. You need to take care of yourself mentally and physically. You need to educate yourself. You need to regulate your reaction to temptation. There's eight things. Okay, so now you get to be whoever you want, but you have to want it. And you have to aim at it. And so to do that, you have to have a vision. Part of the utility of literature is the provision of such visions. Negative, you know, in the case of antiheroes. Positive in the case of protagonists. Who could you be? Part of the advantage of being educated in the humanities is that you can draw your models from the best history has to offer. And that's really what an education in humanity should present you with. It's like, here are the great people of history. And that's you in potential. And so that means you can establish a new peer group. You know, in some sense, my peer group has always been the people whose books I most admired. You know, and that's a reach, right? Because who wants, who dares to compare himself, herself to the truly great people of the past? Nietzsche for me, Dostoevsky, Jung, oh, and then the classic philosophers like Plato and Aristotle and Kant and Hume all these stunning people that were brilliant beyond conception, you know, I mean, that's a high reach and presumptuous in some sense. But the point of a humanities education is in large part to surround yourself with peers of the highest quality. And so you do that in the world of abstraction, which is, and the teachers are there to guide you through that if they only knew that. Mm -hmm. And then you also want to do that with your peers. So one of the things you want to ask yourself if you're graduating from high school is, well, now I'm off to do something else. Might be a job, might be college, might be trade school. It's like, I'm going to make new friends. What's a friend? What do I want? I want someone to tell good news to who will celebrate with me. I want someone to tell bad news to who will be upset that something bad happened to me and not secretly happy. I want someone who's aiming up for me and for them. Or not. Or do you not want that? It's like... What do you want if you're taking care of yourself? What would you want in a relationship? You need a vision for this. And we do a staggeringly appalling job of helping young people yeah. even understand that that's necessary. And I, I know partly why. I was very curious about this because I spent a lot of time with this future authoring program, self-authoring, part of the self-authoring suite, because we built a program to help people make a plan. And once we built the program, one of the things we found, for example, was that if you gave it to young men who were entering college, the few months before they went to college, they were 50% less likely to drop out in the first year. Yeah, that's and that, that's it's crazy. crazy. For a 90 minute exercise, it's like, that's just, and if that, the world had any sense, every single college would have immediately 
used that upon publication of our paper. But none of them did. And that says something. 